Joining us today on Breaking Ground is Mr. Hassan Khan, CEO at TotaQ. Welcome, Hassan. Thank you for being here today. Very exciting, considering what's going on. Would you be able to please share with us a high-level overview of TotaQ and TDN? TotaQ is a deep tech company, uh, and it's beyond blockchain. Uh, we're a new kind of distributed cloud service called containerization. And basically, we containerize the world's assets. You can take any good money document identity, you put it inside our digital container, and that thing becomes verifiably authentic. It tracks itself immutably, and you can't mess around with the record. You can transfer it peer to peer from one person to another. It doesn't matter what system it's on, uh, and it'll update who owns it. Uh, and that means that you can actually have peer to peer trade of trusted, verifiable things. Uh, TDN was uh, actually something that was requested by a lot of our customers. Uh, and really what it is, is just a containerized digital cache that is backed up by clean commodities like battery metals and everything else that themselves are containerized, right? So anyone can go in and verify and say, great, we know what's held in reserve under this backstop. Uh, and really TDN was designed to be stable, uh, useful, decentralized, uh, and allow the owners of TDN to have really strong ownership, right? That no third party could mess around with. Um, and whether you're thinking about peer-to-peer -peer payments in a market uh, or in a supply chain or for cross-border uses, it was designed to be very secure, very efficient, uh, and very practical uh, for those kind of applications. A question I get frequently from investors is, how do you buy, sell, and transact TDN? Could you clarify that for us, please? Whether you're using our apps or mobile systems or those of another company, uh, any app or mobile system or wallet can get powered. So it has that TOTA ADOT technology that we created underneath it. And that then allows that application to own TDN and transact it or own any other kind of containerized asset, right? Including graphite. Uh, and the way that as an example, folks can get their hands on TDN is uh, later this year, we're gonna be releasing a, uh, a wallet and a browser asset, right? Where you can securely own TDN, containerized graphite, all kinds of other assets. From there, there's integrations with payment gateways, right? So you can go through Visa or through Stripe, money goes in one way, you end up with TDN in your wallet uh, that you can use and make payments out of. Uh, if you get the TDN through us, you can also redeem it back out into dollars. The other way um, that we're doing work on with ourselves and a lot of partners is this year we are going to be listing TDN uh, on a digital currency exchange, right? And that provides another route for folks to get their hands on TDN to use it. Another question we get frequently is how would one value TDN in today's market? We've been at this for three or four years, building the technology working with some of the top institutions in the world at that level, like Cambridge University, University College London. On top of that, you start building product, right? And actual projects. Uh, and after doing proof of concepts and things like that in 2018, 19, with big companies like GEMS Education, uh, we were doing supply chain between Europe and the Middle East. That all worked. Uh, and then we started going live uh, in 2020 with real commercialization. Uh, looking at, you know, garbage supply chains, uh, we've got carbon credit projects, uh, those with actual racing horses, graphite, etc. Um, all of them deal with valuable, hard to access assets, uh, at least for the retail consumer. And we're looking and saying, these are the assets that are going to maintain and increase in value, like in the next 5, 10, and even 20 years, because they're needed in the digital economy, they're needed to make electric vehicles, um, sustainability, ESG has become more important, uh, et cetera. So by containerizing those assets and putting them on the market, what that does is it provides the consumer a means to go buy those things, right? Using TDN and actually hold it as part of an investment portfolio or hold it for use. Um, in all of those commercial deals that we did, that's how the price of TDN got established, right? Where it really just has two components to it. One part of TDN's value is that backstop sitting underneath, which gives it a bit of an anchor, right? And some stability. Uh, and then the other part is its usefulness, its security, uh, and the ability to go access these hard to access things. And that's sort of the first set of goods that you can buy. 
those contractual negotiations was actually the first thing that set the value of TDN where, you know, sort of in the beginning when it was more like a, a proto project, right? And proof of concept, the pricing was more down in the lower sense and around 30 cents. And now the contracts have it more at around 85 cents US, right? And that's the first place where price is being established. Um, the second place obviously is once we list it, uh, then it will actually have a listed price too, right? Uh, and it'll be worked out that way. We will, by the way, over this quarter, next quarter and throughout the year be announcing each of these projects um, so that the market and investors and consumers and those that actually want to get real usefulness uh, out of the end asset, uh, they can go and look in and see what each of these projects is about. Uh, we're very excited to uh, you know, sort of do these upcoming announcements. We understand that TDN is used on a government and commercial scale at this point. How and when can we expect the average consumer to be able to take advantage of the benefits offered by TDN and TotaQ? The first uh, apps and wallets and market trading things, uh, specifically looking at things like carbon credits, uh, horses uh, in Europe, those are going to be available by the time we get into well into the middle of this year, right? So quite in the near term. Um, we're very excited to see that happen. You know, TotaQ is a company. Uh, we're down deep in the tech, tech stack, right? The same place that all the IBMs and Red Hats and Microsofts are right, in providing a lot of the tech infrastructure. We're in process. Right now, we're working with both of those companies, um, with their engineering teams, with the sales side, with the commercial side. And really what it's about is making sure that our software platforms get integrated into what Red Hat and IBM provide for all their massive enterprise and government customers, right? And what that does is it allows all those organizations to become container powered, right? They can start to containerize all their assets. And then they can also accept containerized assets like TDN and Graphite. So the part that really matters now for all our great partners and customers like Retomic is that when we're done that work with IBM and Red Hat this year, it means as an example, when you have a large customer, right? Like a large battery manufacturer or something like that it becomes really easy and far less risky for them to be able to say, okay, fantastic. Um, we know how to integrate and accept things like TDN and containerized graphite and make it work with all the systems we already have because there's some very large partners on board where they can make it work um, you know, sort of on both sides. Uh, on top of that, there's business solutions providers, uh, market solutions providers that create the apps and wallets and, 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 and trading platforms that an end user will use. We've heard a lot in recent times about Webtoons. Could you elaborate on that for us, Hassan? Pre-COVID, we had done a lot of work in Asia and Korea. One of the projects that's there, that's hooked up and it's, it's ready to go and they've done the POC in the back and forth, was having uh, Webtoons, which is a form of digital comic. Right, and it's in a vertical format, so you can scroll it on your phone. Uh, and it's very popular in uh, Asia, and now it's coming across to Europe and North America. Um, so there, it was basically having TDN as a means to actually purchase the webtoons uh, and as a loyalty reward for the uh, more active users and fans of webtoons. Uh, and that was really it. Uh, on that side, what we're doing now is now that the capability and platform of that has been sorted out. That'll keep going its own. But what we're really concerned about right now is how do we make a circular market um, for all of the TDN owners uh, and the Gratomics and the carbon credit project and the horse project, right? Okay. So now it's getting to a very Americas, Europe, Middle East uh, kind of market centrism. So that as an example, what we're really aiming at is that any owners of TDN are able to use the TDN right away to buy those kind of hard to access valuable assets. So we're gonna spend a lot of time concentrating on getting that in place. Uh, and then what we're gonna see as part of that next wave coming in is more uh, retail and entertainment kind of things like Webtoons, uh, et cetera. Uh, but really as a first phase, uh, it's around those first assets that I talked about. Thank you so much for your time today and we hope you have a great weekend.